Hello again, this is take two of my video on an ISTJ's take on what makes INFJs so mysterious. I mean, they're already considered mysterious enough on pretty much anywhere you look that's Myers-Briggs related, but especially to us ISTJs, they're mysterious because they're considered our enigma type. And if you're not an ISTJ and you're wondering, well, Paul, what's my enigma type? All you have to do is find someone that has the same first and last letters as you are, but then their middle letters are different. So if you're, say, an ENFP, your enigma type would be the ESTP. So I'm going to attempt to explain from an ISTJ's perspective what makes those crazy INFJs so darn, like, yarg, you guys are even bigger enigmas than I am, and that's saying something. So first off, let me make a disclaimer, if I haven't already, that I love INFJs. I think they're fascinating. And I'll definitely mention some highlights about them later, but for now I'm just going to talk about why sometimes they're so hard to understand. And I think probably the biggest reason is the huge, huge difference in how we communicate. Like, introverted sensing and extroverted thinking is all about the concrete reality. We're all about what is objectively, factually true. And a lot of times we can be kind of blunt in how we present things. Like, I'm the type of guy that'll just say, it is the way it is, take it or leave it. Whereas INFJs, they're all about more of the vague, abstract, and... Uh, I don't even want to try to understand it. See what I mean? about them being an enigma, like, you ask them, you ask them stuff like, so, what do you think about me as a friend? They might be like, well, you're a nice guy, and I'd be like, okay, so what makes me a nice guy? Care to give an example? They're like, well, just in all the times I've seen you, you seem like you're a really sweet person that cares about your friends, and I'm like, ugh, is it that hard just to give a straight answer? Yeah. ISTJs are blunt, INFJs are not. Not to say that that can't change. There are certainly instances where I can be vague and she can be blunt. They, sorry, I tend to categorize INFJs by my one really good friend. Also, INFJs have a habit of... So, w with them having dominant intuition, that means they tend to... Well, they don't even know how to explain intuition themselves, so good luck with me trying to explain it. But I was talking to an ENFJ who has intuition as a secondary function, and here's how she described it, and I paraphrase, quote, Intuition is the way in which we see the natural pattern of how people are, and when something is against that natural pattern, we instinctively realize that something is wrong and try to do something about it. Okay, yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense, but on one hand it doesn't. And let me give you a few, one or two personal examples of where that just baffles me to some extent. There's one time where I was hanging out with my INFJ friend. Well, okay, we weren't hanging out. We were going to Mass. That's significantly more important. Anyway, we were going to Mass and... The day before, actually just a few hours before we hung out, one of my friends had decided that she was going to just kick me out of her life, and we were really good friends, too. And that was really, really devastating to me, but I didn't want to bog down the hangout with my negativity. So I decided that I was going to bury my emotion for my friend and just not mention it. But as we were walking towards the mass, once she showed up, she put her arm around me. And in my head, I was thinking, well, that's odd. I didn't give any indication that I wanted someone to put their arm around me. I didn't say to her, hey, can you put your arm around me? But she did, and I needed that. But I didn't tell that to her. Because I'm the type of person that if I want something, I usually just say it. Whereas INFJs sort of intuitively know when someone wants something and it's and, and she later confirmed that she knew that there was something up because I told her after mass I said yeah I'm not feeling that great today but one of my best friends just decided to dump me she's like yeah I knew that you were upset and I was like how can you tell that from looking at someone for two seconds what's even scarier is that they 
have this almost psychic ability where they can know the future by being able to put a bunch of things together to form what they consider an objective analysis of what's about to happen. Because ISTJs, they're all about the facts. It's worked before, so it'll work again. INFJs are all about, let's discover a, a new way of looking at this. And so as a result, they might analyze a person. This is going off personal experience. I don't know if all NFJs are like that, but I know an ENFJ that said, like, I can just tell that this person is going to mess up the group dynamics. And I'm thinking, I don't know anything about this person. How am I supposed to know whether they're going to be good or bad? Or they'll say, like, this person is just giving off really negative vibes. And even though I get that occasionally, that's usually something I have to think about. Whereas, it's just second nature. Them. It just pops into their head. Whereas, like, with me, I think what probably baffles them is that introverted sensing is my dominant function. I'm really good with facts, you know, stuff I know for a fact. So for me, it's natural for me to just say like, oh yeah, you were wearing a yellow shirt, you had your shoes untied that day, and you spilled strawberry lemonade all over the floor. They'd be like, huh? How do you remember all that? And I'd be like, natural. So it's just as natural for them to know things in advance. Are they fortune tellers or something? Anyway. I end as I promised. I promised that I would talk about what I love about INFJs, and I plan on doing that. What I love about INFJs is because their secondary function is a feeling one, and especially because it's an extroverted feeling, which means it's, it's all about others. They really, really, really feel my pain, sometimes even when I don't even realize it's there myself. There are times where my friend will just say, what's wrong, Paul? And I'll be like, nothing is wrong. And she'll say, are you sure? And I'll say, well, now that you mention it, yeah, there's something wrong. So they sometimes bring out what I don't even realize is there in the first place. Also, INFJs are very deeply caring individuals, but they sometimes take their time to say that they are or to show it. Because Unlike us, where we need proof for things, they just instinctively know, and they probably expect the same of us. Like, they expect me to just know that you're my friend, Paul, or, or, I'm your friend because I've been good to you. Isn't that good enough? Whenever you hear phrases like, just because, or just, or because, or any of those vague terms, you know that someone is intuitive, even if they're an NT type. It's just... ISTJs are like, because this is why. There's always a why or a because and let me prove it. Anyway, another thing I love about INFJs is that they are very precise when it comes to how they express what they're expressing. Not that they give a straight answer, because they often don't. But the answer that they do give is carefully thought out. It's It doesn't just bumble out of their mouth cluelessly. No offense to you ENFPs and ESFPs out there, but sometimes the stuff that comes out of your mouth, it's like, did you even think about what you were saying before you said it? INFJs carefully, carefully think, and sometimes it takes them weeks, and they meticulously organize exactly what they're going to say, and they say it to the dot. And if they mess up on it, boy, do they dwell on it. You could say they're their worst critics, in a manner of speaking. Also, they have a meticulously structured inner mind. Like, their mindset is not going to change. You don't want to mess with a stubborn INFJ. So, in the case of my friend, you know, she's Catholic, I'm Catholic. And even if I decided not to be Catholic and tried to sway her otherwise, it would not be an easy thing to do, because that... Is... INFJ stubbornness, don't mess with it. That's all I'm going to say for now. But, on the other hand, and I already did a video of this on my other camera, so I'm not going to bother going in depth, but on the other hand, people say that ISTJs and INFJs aren't really naturally supposed to get along, yet I've been saying this whole video, one of my best friends is INFJ, so you might be wondering how it is that we get along so well. And I think what it is, is that she appreciates me being able to factualize things that she might consider more objective or more uh, 
feelsy. And for me, I appreciate how she draws out what I'm feeling when sometimes I might not be properly feeling it or I might be bottling it up. And she's like, come on, Paul, you can let it out. You can trust me. You know, stuff like that. Also, because ISTGs are more outwardly structured, I can often help her to... Sorry, I keep saying her. I can often help them to be more aware of their environment. I often say to my INTJ friend, Oh, brother, you'd forget your own head if it wasn't attached to your shoulders. I can help them observe what's going on around them. And because their mind is meticulously structured, the they're INFJs because they're J's up here, even if they're messy down there. So she can often help me find a sturdy and stable mindset. She can say, well, maybe if you look at it from this angle, that way you have a framework to work on for the future. Because the ISTJs, they're not really future-oriented people. We're all about the here and now, or let's look at what happened before. Whereas INFJs are always moving forward. And that really helps, because I'm not really that much of a future-oriented guy. Like, I just came up with the idea to do this video, like, two hours ago. So, yeah, she helps me be a more, they help me be more future-oriented. I help them with memorizing facts and being more outwardly organized. So, where one is weak, the other is strong, and vice versa. It's the seesaw effect. So, without further ado, that's my take on INFJs, and if you're an INFJ out there, know that you may be weird, but sometimes Weirdness can be a very attractive thing, so keep it up, be yourself, and God bless. Bye.